I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to be working with. I've got my I've got my canvas, and you can see <laughs> my canvas. I pulled out an old one. It's got a puncture hole up there. It's kind of warped. You know, my philosophy is take the pressure off yourself and uh, just plan on creating garbage so that you don't have to say the whole time, is this good enough? Is this good enough? No, it's not good enough. Just, just start with that. It's not good enough to keep. We're just here to learn. I've always had a passion for the learning process more than the finished product. And so that's the purpose I can serve. Now, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I want to encourage you to, in the chat as we go, Ben is going to be uh, keeping an eye out for that as I paint. And, you know, maybe I'll, I, I can flip over myself. I've got my computer in front of me, but things might get ugly if I start trying to multitask too much since we're trying to give you good content for your time. I do appreciate yeah, full dis it. Full disclosure, if uh, you see Mural Joe in the chat room, that's not actually Mural Joe, that's me. So yeah. I just need to be honest <laughs> with you up front. When you say hi, Joe, and I say, yeah. hey, what's up? Yeah. It's actually, yeah. I'll tell Joe later that you said hi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. It's good to have brothers. They look out for you. You know, they really get you back. And I am actually renting space now from our older brother. There's five of us all together. And so this this space I'm in is the help of one brother. Ben is on the line. That's help from another. So good to have family. Okay. So I'm going to get started with the setup that we'll be using. And when I need to... When I need to go over, this is where we're going to test out my angles and, and just say so. If something doesn't look good, the important thing here is that this uh, looks good from where you are, that you can see what I'm doing is what I mean. So I'm going to flip over to this camera, and this is my right side. And so tell me, uh, uh, Ben, you can tell me you didn't get a chance to see this. Uh, this is the great, canvas. Man. Okay, okay, very good. I did all right. Now... I want to show you the supplies I'll be using. So I've got these little uh, temporary storage, and this is a common thing for me to use. Uh, you can just use whatever whatever you have around. Uh, maybe, I, I guess I could have told you ahead of time, but the, the good thing is this is recorded. It's going to stay on YouTube. Now, don't be nervous about me having a heart attack just because my hands shake. You know, I will admit that I'm just slightly nervous being in front of you all. I'm I'm just very flattered that you all would take the time to watch me, but but my hands always have a tremor, and I get a lot of questions about that. So it helps you mix paint more efficiently. Yes, and it does, yeah. Hang on, to <laughs> yeah. I don't even have to do anything. It just <laughs> it just makes it okay. So that's what I'm going to use to premix colors. I have learned along the way. This is not something I was as big on when I first created those videos. So I have uh, added this to my my toolbox, my techniques uh, of using small amounts of pre-mixed. And when you're working with wall paints, like I love to do, because I, I paint murals for the most part, uh, you need a larger amount. You, you know, you, it's hard to just use a little palette. It dries really fast. And so if you want to pre-mix something, it's nice to have a container that also has a lid. And so these, these are the same containers that you get at restaurants when you, you know, get your salsa to go. So I'm going to mix a few colors. Now, I said in the email that I sent out, and you can get on the Mural Joe email list if you would like. Uh, that's hosted through MailChimp. If you go to my website, you just follow the link, uh, the contact link to get on the mail list. And anytime you order something from me, uh, that's, that's the way you get on that uh, list so that you can get notified anytime I send additional workshops like this out, any notifications of uh, anything new. So... I'm gonna mix three colors. I'm gonna mix a reflection color and an underwater color. Actually, let's just keep it at two colors for now to keep it simple and we'll revisit making a basic reflective surface of water and go from there. And I'll be relying a lot on your feedback, your comments for uh, where to take this. But I'm gonna paint a picture of, I'm, I'm gonna paint a seascape, I'm gonna put ocean, uh, some sky in there, and this might take multiple multiple shows, but like I said, the important thing to me is that we're getting good information out, and this is just to say thank you for getting the channel up to 300,000 subscribers. I appreciate it so much. I love sharing what I do. I love giving things away for free whenever I can afford to, and 
So this is a fun thing for me to be doing. Now what I'll do for an underwater color is just literally pick a color. So here I have my, I have my red and blue cans. And these are, this is a, a real cheap sample uh, quartz that I got from Sherwin Williams. So don't, don't be crazy about trying to get just the perfect blue. I can't say enough times that it is not the exact color that, that makes water look like water. You know, what I'm trying to show you is how to get things to look believable, how to bring your imagination to life on that canvas. It's not in having this exact shade a color. You're literally just choosing your landscape. You're choosing the color of the water. I choose blue. So I'm going to put some of this in there. And uh, one reason I'll, I'll put it in here also that I found helpful, it's a very practical thing, is that it's easier to store in a small space. I don't actually need a whole quart of this color when I'm not painting an entire wall. So it'll fit on my the shelf of my easel a lot more easily if I just put a little bit in here. So this has no other color in it. But uh, you know what I will do is I'm changing my mind as we're going. I'm going to add some yellow. So I said we would be working with red, yellow, blue, and white. So I never saw a body of water or a sky that could not be painted with those colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. They can all be painted with just those colors. And so... I'm going to add just a touch of yellow in mine. And the goal here is not to make sure that I add yellow, but to have a slightly turquoise color because I love the color turquoise. I love turquoise water. I love, I love looking at uh, ocean views that have that Caribbean tropical look. I'm working on a painting for a friend right now, my friend Steve, and he is hiring me to paint a scene of, of he and his wife walking on the beach in Hawaii. But whenever I'm painting a real scene, like from a photo, man, does it give me a run for my money. I'm like, oh, so much easier painting from imagination. All right, I'm just mixing this in. Now, the blue pigment is a lot more powerful than the yellow pigment. So I'm going to put this on the canvas just so you can see where I'm at, just so you can see the shade of this color. It's very very turquoise, and it would be a lot more of an intense turquoise if I just used a green, a, a turquoise pigment instead of adding yellow. Anytime you mix colors, you are reducing intensity of color as, as opposed to just using a pigment itself. So I'm going to flip over to our right hand camera, and this is going to be my underwater color. That's very dark in comparison. So just, just so that you can see the color better. What I'll do is grab some white. Oh, check out this white that I'm working out of here. Look, look at this. I got a gallon right there. So this will be where I pre-mix my colors. Now, I didn't want to do this. I know that this is boring for a lot of people that are just looking for entertainment, but I really want to walk you through the things that I do in order to set myself up for success. So getting my paint into the proper containers is definitely one of those things. So I'm gonna put this pure white. Now in this case, I don't, I don't get sponsored by any paint brands. And I typically decline. I've always declined whenever there's any request for, for uh, po posting things, putting ads, because I just don't know that I'm the best judge of what the best products are. I just want you to be in charge of that. And I just buy whatever's around myself. And so I'm putting the white into here. And this is what I'll make my reflection color with. Notice I didn't wash my brush because I don't care if that turquoise color mixes with this dark uh, or with this white because I'm going to need them to mix on the canvas anyway. So I'm going to put that down there. And just so you can see my color, we'll go over here. Add some white so that you can see that beautiful turquoise. Man, that's got to be my favorite color. I love that color. So when it's lightened, it turns to this real nice turquoise. But when I put it on unlightened, I'm going to use my dark color because I like dark underwater color. So that'll be my underwater. Now we need a reflection color. 
So here's what happens. We have the, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep this white for lightening my, I, I just realized this is gonna be better. And so I'll keep my light color that I just mixed for any time I wanna add a highlight. So this is for future use, don't get confused by it right now. Uh, you know what, to keep things simple, I'm gonna stick with what I originally said. We'll make reflection color. Uh, I like to put highlights in the water, but I realized I'm getting ahead of myself. And if you're mixing along with me, I wanna keep things simple. So let's just keep this reflection color. So to turn that into a reflection color, we're gonna add red and blue. The reason I wanna add red, so I really just like to understand, and I like for anybody listening to me to be able to grasp the, the mechanics, what's happening to cause the things we're looking at that we're trying to reproduce. So I'm just getting, getting rid of some paint while I talk there. When blue light bounces off of things, and, and I'm just gonna say, you know, by my observation, it's always just by my observation so far. Sure, I'll find out that I'm wrong later, but this is what's working for me right now. And I, I just like to share it because I was always very frustrated by people not sharing when I was trying to learn. So when light bounces off of things, it seems to turn more purple. And when it goes through things, it seems to go to the opposite color of purple, yellow. So this is a fun pattern. I like to call it the rule of shifting hues, which at this point, I need to post an update on, on that uh, color color theory detail of mine. And that is, uh, I've always talked about how when you're illuminating something and you want light to shine through it, it will shift the color toward yellow. And then it's, if you hear noise in the background, they've got a bike shop downstairs. I'm in the upstairs of a bike shop, so that's kind of fun. So you might hear some crazy biker folks downstairs. So uh, I was talking about the rule of shifting hue. So the reason I'm adding purple to this, I just want a blue sky reflecting off turquoise water. So why would I add red? I need that little bit of violet that the red will make when it hits the blue in order for this to look like it is reflection and not some, some other kind of light. You know, seeing the kinds of light. Look how bad my hand shakes when I hold it up, up here. Mix that paint, Joe, mix it up. It is so frustrating to have shaky hands. I'm all ears if people have any uh, any suggestions. But I already know one thing that will help me to be less shaky. That is, don't Deep be nervous. Breathing. Don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't. <laughs> I'm just so shy. Okay, I want to show you this color. All right, so I've mixed this. Red and blue. Uh, oh, I was getting... Maybe maybe less coffee too. One yeah. of your, uh... I know, I know. Man, everybody knows at this point that that is, my, that is my problem in life. It just feels so good. Okay, that's my color. So I'm gonna put that on and we're gonna see how that compares to my underwater color. All right. So if you're painting a mural then it really pays to have these pre-mixed and figured out and to understand what, what kind of light these colors represent. So that's my reflection color going across the top of my underwater color right here. And I'm gonna have a, a, a real nice setup for what looks like turquoise water with a ordinary blue sky reflecting, just something very simple. So now I'm ready to start painting this and so let's get my rag ready i keep one of these handy just to just to um wipe the right now wipe a few boogers off my nose and to dry my brush because i put tons of of water on my brush while i'm working and so then I need to dry it off on a towel. So this is a, a regular workflow for me. Notice I try not to dip my brush way down in the paint. You can see that it's dipped halfway in there. And so uh, whenever I dip it in the water, you know, I'm here painting. This this is just a demo. I'm just practicing here. 
I dip it in the water after that, and then I wipe it off on here. So I've got water down there. I should show you that. I should show you that set up here. I bet I could just walk around and give you a good look since you don't have that. So give me one second to walk around because I really want you to see this. Let me go over here. And I just want you to see real quick the base down there. Okay, so this is my workstation. And I, I just wouldn't want you to miss this. So it was worth walking around the table with my, with my headphone cord here, risking disaster in order to show you this. So, so here I've got my water and this is what I'm talking about. I'll dip in the water and then I'll wipe on the towel and man, do I burn through these towels. And then I've got my colors down here. I've got reflection color. What do you think of this easel? My friend, my friend Cody custom made these easels for me. So here's my that easel's looking sharp. We got uh, a little bit of appreciation for that little hole in the upper left hand corner of your canvas too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, gives it character. <laughs> People pay to have things antique sometimes. I'll do it for free if you want me to antique. <laughs> you're, you're good at having holes in canvases. You hey, are the man. man. No, I can make things look classic real fast. Okay, so now we're gonna go up here, and we're gonna get back to the water reflection. And you'll probably just just have to forgive the slightly tilted tilted angle. I can probably probably get us a little bit less tilted there. Give me a second, so that you have a closer look. Just tilting the camera so you can have a more level look at my water. There we are. Okay, let's paint. Now, we want to have some natural looking waves. And I've seen this a million times. I've seen this so many times that I give the I give the instruction and I leave things out. You know, you forget all of the things that you're doing without thinking. And then you you look at the, the things that aren't coming together for others. And I felt sad looking back at some pictures like, oh, man, I didn't explain that well enough. So this is going to be hopefully a much more thorough explanation of the wave painting technique. Uh, there are a lot of different techniques, techniques that I can use. Now I'm going to switch to I'll, I'll start with the bigger brush so that we can really just see this and then switch to a smaller brush. And this is a method that I think is very good for learning. So a wave is here, let's just scoot over here. Ignore this, we're gonna scoot over here. Now, a wave on water, it pops up like this. Now both the top and the bottom are curved because we're looking at a three dimensional shape. So I'm just gonna paint real quick the front side of a wave. So think of an oval and because of the, you know, we'll just say the surface tension of the water, we have a top that is a slightly more pointed than the base. But, but here's the problem that always occurs. Once you understand the shape, it's instinctive to make it too bulgy, too steep. And so once we have this understanding, we really want to learn how to make it subtle because it's only on like the most turbulent water that it'll spike up real steep like. So this is simplifying it as much as I can. Now we're going to put another one right next to it. So let's say we've got one. It can be anywhere up here behind it. So in perspective, further things will be higher. Let's put another oval just like that, a little bit smaller like this. Now notice that I connected it because that's what water will do. But if they weren't connected, this would be the exact same shape as this. So slightly more curved on the top and uh, curved curved on the bottom, just not as much. And then we go over here. I'll put another one. Things look good in threes. Let's do three of them. Now, to add reflection to this, I really just want to paint in the areas where the wave is not, but there are gradients involved. Now, this was me years ago 
trying to understand the texture that I was looking at that was creating the look of waves. I'm just going to put another one right in here, just, just for fun. We're going to put one right there. We're taking this nice and slow so that you can, you can fully understand this and then develop your own techniques on building this pattern in the future. So first I'll show you how it works, then I'll show you the techniques that I've used in order to produce this look more uh, quickly and impressionistically on a large scale because I don't have time to do this a million times when I'm trying to paint a body of water. So the next thing I'll do is move to the reflection color. So if you've watched my videos, you see me talking about smiles and frowns. Well, here's, here is, you know, and I'm just talking about the sloping shapes of the water. So we've got a lot of smiles that happen in the reflective areas of this. So the reason that the, re the reflection is this, now you can see it, the negative space left where we're not looking through the water. So water, when you look through it at like a window, like 90 degrees, you see the most water. Uh, as you tip it parallel with your vision, you see more reflection, and so it's a gradient. So these are the areas that are tipping back. Now watch what happens when I take this color and I start creating these smile shapes. So let's start under this one, and we'll go like this. More pressure in the middle, less pressure as I go up until it's just a little bit at the top of that. It's normal to see a much thinner line here because this is the peak coming out in front of and blocking a lot of the view of these reflective slopes, these areas. So when I do my shapes, we make sure that we taper out to this. And really in this model, I'm just filling in my negative space. I already have that shape left behind by defining where the more transparent shapes are. So now I release pressure, less pressure, less pressure, and look how that brush stroke just tapers like this. So now I'm gonna go over the top edge. Now I do this real fast when I'm working on a painting on a smaller scale. I'll do a few more strokes across the top edge of the reflection stroke that I just did. Look at that gradient that it creates, much, much nicer for a continuous watery surface if I, if I want it to look more lifelike. So then I come in here, a light stroke right across the top. I'm not destroying my shape. I'm creating soft edges on that shape. But the shape is still defined because it's, of course, a, a lot more of the reflection color right in here. And you can see the gradient just wrapping around that same shape. So if you can understand this pattern, then you can go out to a body of water and the more you look at it, the more you'll become familiar and see this happening in real time. So let's put another one here. I feel like it's similar to reading, to learning to read. You feel like you're just looking at chaos, at first a bunch of unfamiliar shapes and colors, uh, but then as you gradually learn what the shapes are that make up that texture, you, you start it sticks out. Your, your mind just gives it to you and says that's what it is. Okay, so I went over the top edges, going over the top edge of this one, maybe a couple times to really blend that out. And then we'll go over this top edge. Now, if I really want to get detailed, which I am with this, with this little test model, then I'll probably want the ends of these not to be perfect little spears because everything becomes all edges become rounded as they touch each other on this. And so these edges are going to be rounded right here. These are going to be rounded. So if I was doing a close-up detail painting, I would probably work a little bit on not leaving sharp corners. But I'll show you as we progress, I'll mention this later, uh, of the technique that helps those to go away. Now, when I'm working with a big brush as well, I can just quickly stroke over everything that I painted and it'll all just bleed together if the paint is still just a little bit wet. So watch this, dry out my brush, technique I've used a lot, like that. If the timing is right, then you'll get a real smooth blend, but the paint has to be, I'm gonna say 60% dry. It's still tacky, so it still moves, but it doesn't wanna move as quick because it's not as liquid 
as it was. So this is a technique you can use if you're painting on a larger scale. I don't recommend trying to do that a lot when you're doing real tiny stuff because we're really talking more about placements when we're doing smaller things than, than we are about, you know, exacting these gradients. Okay, so now if I continue this pattern and I see these shapes getting smaller, smaller, smaller as they go back, then this is going to very quickly start looking like water. So let's let's speed things up a little bit. I'll add just a little touch of water. I, I put my brush, just the end of my brush in the water, and we're going to put a base coat of my underwater color on right here. Man, am I excited about the about the uh, project that Ben and I are working on. We've got some of the best videos that we've ever made on their way. That's true. We have a great secret, don't we? Yes. It's been hard to just keep that a secret, you know, but if, if I, you know, if I just start talking like crazy about it, it's just going to become another one of those things. Yeah, yeah, Joe. <laughs> no, I don't want to destroy it before it happens. So now I'm going to do that, that shape. Now watch what happens in the negative space if I repeat this shape. So there's my slight smile shape, and these are interconnected, right? So I'm gonna make these interconnected as I paint them. I'm still using the big brush. I'll switch to a smaller brush in a little bit because this big brush, this, this is not my favorite kind. This is Wooster. I actually uh, prefer Purdy because the taper on the bristles is, is a little softer, finer. They taper to a point better. So that's a little bit of criticism that Wooster hopefully takes to heart as they're developing uh, paintbrushes. <laughs> that's why I like Purdy better. I don't get any money, no sponsorship. That's it. That's the truth. Okay, so now I'm making those smile shapes. And when you're making those shapes with knowledge of this texture in mind, you can detect right away when you don't like one because you, you see it not creating your your texture. So, you know, you're like, oh, I don't like the way that one came out. Maybe I'll just paint over it. Now I'm going to go through and instead of just doing one or two, I'm going to do a whole bunch of top edges. So now I am um, hit that top edge, hit that top edge. And when I say top edge, I mean the top edge of this reflection brush stroke, that reflection color right there. I just hit that top edge. The gradient gets softer and I systematically go through and hit a few of them if I miss some. <clears throat> It's okay. Well, my voice. <clears throat> no, it's good. I just, I just got a frog in my throat there. I learned some great voice technique. I'm not going to go uh, into great depth about that, but man, that guy Ken lives right here in Flagstaff, and he's got tons of YouTube subscribers. I was like, oh, this guy's a celebrity. He uh, coached me a little bit on voice technique. Saved it. Saved my voice, man. I'm so thankful for that. Okay. So that's my technique. This is how I make those waves. Now, here's what happens a lot. When you're doing a technique like this on a small scale, maybe you forget where the gradients need to be and you start blending. Watch how this is going to look worse as I blend the bottom edges of the brush strokes instead. Okay, we're gonna blend that one. We're gonna blend that one. Now I'm, I'm bringing the bottom edges down like this. Okay. I mean, honestly, it doesn't look that, that way. <laughs> I don't know how to make it worse. No, if I forget where the gradients are, I start to lose my, my three-dimensional, you know, uh, trough, wave, trough, wave, uh, especially if I'm doing a, a less careful technique, you know. So remembering this, this pattern is, is really helpful. So now we're going to shrink this down. And, and work on a more speedy technique to get that look on a large scale. So I want to paint a, an ocean that is going back like this. And so let's, let's start with some underwater color. I like to, I, I usually like to work from foreground back when I'm doing water because an upward workflow really helps me. So what I'll do is start, start covering this with my underwater color and I'm going to put it in an area you can do this technique here let's let's do wet on dry and wet on wet we'll save some over here I'm going to go uh, over here put some that's going to dry it's just going to dry for a while 
And we'll, we'll go in there and do a little bit of wet on dry technique. Okay, well, silence is good. Joe, is it true, is, is it true that um, when you paint good, it's hard to paint bad? <laughs> only because of habits, you know, only because we are, you know, I, I am a creature of habit. And so I just am repeating processes that I put great care into developing because they work well. And so you forget in order to make something look uh, like it used to before you learned those, you have to remove the habit. And so, so you have painted bad at some point, right? I oh, mean, man. Has oh, Real Joe be, ever sucked at painting? You got to be kidding me. Heck yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, the only, I, I started developing artistic ability at a young age. And I think it's fair to say I started developing because it was the interest level that built the, the retention that it takes. And, and so I always had that. When I started painting, I could very meticulously work my way through details as I was seeing it. But then when I would try something faster that required good technique, you know, techniques are like a trick. And then I was very displeased with the results. These colors are, are looking so good already. A lot of people are talking about how uh, it just looks right already, just the colors on there. All right, um, sweet. How did you make that dark blue that you started with? And how are you making underwater blue? Yeah. Like okay. What are your the contents Great. of those colors? Okay, that's very good. No, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, this, this was just blue and a little bit of yellow. And... Honestly, I don't think this color would look great, except that it's balanced with the color that it's against. So, uh, like I said, I, I don't want I don't want uh, you to be tricked into thinking that I got just the perfect color. I got the I got just the right relationship of color. So when I'm mixing a reflection color, so these are my two colors. I added the red to the reflection color. It would have just been blue and white. And I didn't make it turquoise because things that bounce off, light that bounces off of things moves toward purple instead of toward yellow. So if we put a rainbow up, you know, if we put a rainbow up, you just have to imagine. I talk with my hands. So if you imagine a rainbow, this is why these colors look good. Because if we had a rainbow that went purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, then when any of these colors goes through, uh, when any of these colors of light goes through something, let's say light shining through your hand, then the light is going to move from whatever color it is, the brighter it gets, the more toward yellow. So if you're on low, we'd be more on the red end of the spectrum. If it was your hand, flashlight in the dark, you've all put your fingers on that. So the brighter that gets, the more orange it gets, the darker it gets, the more red it gets. It's moving toward yellow as it gets brighter, toward purple as it gets darker. Okay, now let's think about a green leaf in the sun or green water in the sun. Green is over here. We've got purple, red, orange, yellow, green. So green moves toward yellow as the light shines through it, as it illuminates. So what I did was I made an underwater color that is blue, blue, green, just because I like it. And the light that's bouncing off of it is doing the opposite because it's not going through, it's bouncing off. So the opposite effect of that is moving the other way. So any of those colors, when they bounce off something, move toward purple. You're not going to find this explanation anywhere. You could search the internet. And if anyone says it, then they must have watched my videos because I searched hard for dibs, how this works. Dibs, I got dibs, got dibs. You know what? I got to say this. <laughs> this is not to brag. This is to tell you that this is worth remembering. This changed my painting forever, was discovering this pattern. Going out in nature and, and seeing that this is a dependable pattern changed my color mixing forever. And so it's really good. If you see it in other videos, that's great. It means the information is out. And I guess I shouldn't be so arrogant as to think I'm the only one that can find stuff. But anyway, light bounces off, it moves toward purple. 
because we've got purple on this end, right? We've got purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple again. So whoosh, moves to purple as it bounces off, moves toward yellow as it goes through. So just remember, there's two things that the light does. It can go through it or it can bounce off of it. It's doing both with water. If I want a color bouncing off of this turquoise, I'm going to move that color toward purple. And that's why this reflection already looks so good because I added the purple to what would have been just a light blue. And even a light blue turquoise, if I was mixing some of the underwater color with some of the sky color that I want. But because I know I need to add that red, boom, it becomes reflection. Red as in moving it toward purple. That was the reason for the red. So now let's put some of this paint on here. And we're going to start in on our more speedy technique. Look at this. My paint is not even mixed very well in my cup. I've got some of it more blue, some of it more green, which isn't going to hurt anything. I don't know if I can work fast enough to cover this. We'll see. But we're trying to do a speedy technique here. So while you're painting, uh, here's one for you to chew on. Yeah, uh, okay. Do you see. think about... Uh, color first and then perspective? Do you think about perspective and then the color? Is it a thing that happens all at once in your brain? I would say um, those are both very important. I would say perspective. I would say perspective because maybe I, okay, you said chew on for a little bit. I'm going to chew on that for a little bit because I don't want to give a bad yeah. answer. <laughs> Accuracy is important. Accuracy, at least accurate to what I really think, you know, what the true answer, what the true answer about what I, what I'm experiencing. You know, Ben knows this to be true. To be an artist is to be sensitive. It's like torture. Ooh, like. Don't I know. <laughs> don't I know. <laughs> but it, it causes you to be good at being introspective, you know, and so I can answer questions like that just by revisiting all the different moments that I've thought about, because the sensitivity is so high. You're like, huh, well, I, I feel like I'm experiencing this. When I look at water, I feel like I'm experiencing this. So that, that intro is introspection with that. Yeah. That activity of being introspective is really the tool that I use to try to transfer knowledge. Okay. So now I'm using the speedy wet on wet technique. I'm doing these same kind of shapes with just this light swipe. See, like I did one here. I'll just go over it again. I want my reflection to be uh, not as bright here in the foreground. So I'm going to let it mix quite a bit by going over it multiple times. My workflow tends to be upward. So I'll put one down and then I will put a few smaller ones attaching to it and I'll work my way up. And this is very important. We want the overlaps. We don't want to go and separate all these brush strokes. And, and this is something that, that hangs a lot of people up is you get uh, all of the brush strokes looking like this. I'm gonna go down here and just imitate what I see a lot of. So we've got a stroke there, nice stroke, nice stroke there, nice stroke here, nice stroke here, nice stroke here, 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 here. Now, as you can see, that does not look as continuous. I'm way down here on the bottom of the frame, so I'll be working my way up. That when I fill things in like this, it there's no way this is going to look as continuous and three-dimensional as this here. So the change of size in brushstroke and the and the uh, overlapping, we want the shapes to connect with each other. Don't be nervous about destroying the shapes when it's time to go back and add the little little bit of gradient, whatever's possible. So now I'm at this stage where I'm targeting the top edge of the brush strokes. So I see one here, I'm gonna hit that. Hit that one, hit that, right there. And this is where, this is where I'm trying. Sounds like Ben's gonna see some. <laughs> well, I was just reading, I was just uh, translating Spanish actually. <laughs> oh, nice, how's it going? I'm trying to slow. learn Spanish. Slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get better little by little. I use Duolingo. 
Okay, uh, you let me know when that's ready, but I'm gonna finish my sentence. Uh, and that is that here's where I'm trying to go to sharp corners, wherever I have sharp corners. And just, uh, I, I can't take time trying to make round shapes, but what I can do is just try to put a brush stroke over them a few times. So here's a good example. See the sharp corner, it makes this spear shape. And I want shapes more like this, even though they're not continuous and smooth, the combination of many little shapes can still make that. So I chopped off that corner and I'll have a, a, a better, more three-dimensional look on my water because of it. So I'll go here, do the same thing. Anywhere I see those and the, and the touch on my brush is very light. I'm just laying down that longest end of the bristles first. And as I increase pressure, the whole brush lays down and gives me that, that brush stroke. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down here and my brush is now running out of that reflection color. So this is a good time to come down here and do the areas below because I actually want less paint down there and I want them to be more spaced apart. This is where I want, this is where I want just less reflection altogether. So both larger spacing and more blended higher percentage of underwater color. So anywhere I see real bright color, just go over it. Now, this is not a technique that allows me to be a complete perfectionist. You know, if, if I really wanna spend time on that, I have to go slower, do smaller areas. I mean, I guess I could with this technique, but I, I would not wanna do such a large area if I was trying to be more, more perfectionistic with, with the blending of all the shapes, but to me, that sometimes the impressionistic look can be more beautiful than a uh, more photo photographic look, we'll call it. Okay, now I'm just looking for any lines. You look, we are sensitive to texture. So any continuing rows of shapes, you know, we humans are line finders. You know, think of, think of, watch, this is a fun experiment. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole for a minute. Watch, three dots, okay? like that. Okay, those three dots make a triangle. Why? Why does that make a triangle? Because we are line makers. We instantly connect. We, we see the shapes things makes. Okay, watch this. Okay, now I'm going to go like this. Now, if I just scatter dots everywhere, they won't become a line. But if I put dots close enough to what would be a line, I'm going to put them just close enough you're like, oh, those aren't random. They're, they're in a line. Okay, you see what I mean? We're line finders by nature. It'd be hard to teach a computer to do that. It'd be really hard because it takes, it takes a certain tendency. It takes a certain programming. So my point is we want to be line finders when we're creating the work. We got we to gotta look for the shapes that are creating lines because those are going to interfere with perspective. So here I might not want this continuous line, dark, 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 diagonally down because – it takes away my horizontal surface a little bit, so I'll cut through it. There we go. See, so I don't want a bunch of vertical lines. They interfere with my perspective. Hopefully that'll make more sense as, as we progress with this picture. So let's put more water on here. Let's put more waves up in here. And we're almost ready to do our wet on dry technique here and, and compare the two. But now I'm going to move to my smaller brush We'll put our underwater color. Here, let's just use the bigger brush, it's faster. Dude, that's looking good, man. That wet on wet is uh, is uh, getting a lot of love in your, all right, all right, cool. your chat here. Well, we really took time. I mean, what are, are we've got to at least be an hour in by now, aren't we? So I think uh, when people are after fast results, this, this, I, the point I'm trying to make is that the setup makes this happen. Get yourself set up just right for this wet on wet technique. It's hard to do if you're trying to think through all of the things that I took a while to explain at the beginning as you're doing it. You know, you don't want to be trying to mix on a palette while you're trying to do this wet on wet technique. You want to have yourself lined up, lined up with the perfect shot so that you can just sink it in the hoop, you know? <laughs> My friend Daniel, he's, he would say, 
from Brazil, you know, Daniel Zilberstein came from Brazil and helped me paint a mural. Man, what a fun time we had. He always said, he says, I just do the assist. You, you make the goal. You make the goal, he said in his Brazilian voice, in his Portuguese accent. Okay, let's go uh, like this now and put some more of these. So here I can, I can put this same shape. And so I just have this circular flow like this, this without touching the canvas. So if I just slowly get closer to the canvas, watch what starts happening. That shape starts appearing. You know, I'm just turning on the wave machine. That's all I'm doing. Turn it on, man. Turn, Turn it, it on. on and then make it hit that canvas. Okay. So this is something that I just took time to train is to get this motion just, just so, you know, to get just like this. Notice that I gradually worked my way upward and I made sure to overlap my shapes. Now, don't feel bad when you do this and it, and it doesn't come out looking just like this. It might. It might come out looking just like this, but I'm keeping track of... Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe like six different things. I'm keeping track of how consistently level my shapes are. I want them all to be the same. So if they start going like, like this, some this way, some this way, do you see how that looks not as good? That looks not as natural because the inconsistency of those angles. So my angles are very consistent. They're constantly... They're constantly creating new shapes that all seem like they're connected to the same surface because that angle, that direction of my brush stroke is consistent. So if I wanted this to be a flowing river, I might slope them all this way. I might slope them all this way. You can have them something other than level, but you want to be able to be consistent. So I have consistency. My brush stroke is looking uh, looking good with the tapered ends, and then I'm also keeping track of my change of size. So down here, I have shapes that are maybe this big. When I'm up here, maybe they're this big. And I do this, uh, th this is even some difficulty for me at this point to go through the multiple things that I'm thinking about because uh, it's automated. It's, it's just automated from doing it over and over. It's not because I'm extra special. I just spent a lot of time uh, turning this into habit. And so now I'm revisiting the, the basics and thinking, okay, okay, so these are the things that are happening. Larger strokes down here, they're all very consistent. They get smaller as they go up. I'm looking at the spacing. I'm making sure that I don't make them completely evenly spaced. So this causes larger waves to be made from smaller waves. And this is an effect we want. While, while I was talking, I flipped my brush around the other way. I don't know if you noticed that, but now I'm stroking out to the right. Sometimes that just helps me to, to uh, have a more, we'll just say organic flow to my, to my water texture. But it is the same brush stroke, just going from left to right. And, and depending on the brush, sometimes my brush just isn't working well going one direction. So I flip it around and, and it works better going, going the other. So we've got the we've got the horizontal shape. We've got the change of perspective and size. We're making sure that they're uh, not perfectly evenly spaced and that they're overlapping, so that I'm building big shapes out of small shapes. So when I build big shapes out of small shapes, let's go down here and do a little bit and look at exactly what I'm talking about: building big shapes out of small shapes. So. When I'm doing the wet on dry technique, I want to make sure that I have a watered down mix of my reflection color. I'm going to do all of the same shapes and it's just going to be more of a transparent layer on this rather than a, a, a mix of, of opaque colors. So let's just put some paint in here real quick. Finally, my hands are not shaking as bad. I must be feeling a little bit more confident now. You're like, yeah, well, <laughs> we got a lot of vitamins you can take. Yeah, lots of advice. Huh? We got lots yeah. of advice. I How read them. I read them. Looking out for your old Joe's best interest. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's very nice. I appreciate that. Maybe, maybe use better hand lotion. 
<laughs> to make Just some kidding. stuff. That was, <laughs> that, was, that was my suggestion. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why it sucked. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are getting old, brother. Yeah, yeah. Wrinkles happen. <laughs> Yeah, the beauty doesn't come as easy as it used to. Yeah, we got a handful of questions too that you can hit up whenever you uh, finish up your yeah, uh, wet on great. dry. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Let's hit those questions. Yeah, I can do it while I'm well. Well, we want. What do you think about um, so reflection color? Mm -hmm. uh, Mary is wondering. Uh, she's trying to paint a stormy water scene, and she's got some greenish clouds going. Oh what yeah. Would, okay. Whoa, that's awesome. Reflection color be on the water if she's got greenish clouds in a stormy ocean yeah. scene. Yeah, very good question. Very good question. So uh, you always just want you always just want the mix of what is being reflected. So let's call that source with what is doing the reflecting. So let's call that let's call that what should we call it? Body. The body with the reflection source. Okay, so when a body reflects the source, it is just a mix of the two colors. So you simply do a mix of the two plus move the color toward violet because it's bouncing off. That is the rule that you can always rely on. So it doesn't mean add purple all the time because if you add purple to, uh, I don't know, to green, it's just going to kill the kill the color. You know, it just means that it's going to slightly move that direction. So, whatever your colors are, if you've got a slightly greenish cloud, just take that color that you made the cloud with, mix it with your water, and then literally just visualize that on the rainbow. Do whatever it takes to make it slightly more violet, just slightly more violet. That's all you do. Just move it toward that color, and then it will resemble reflection. Uh, a lot, a lot more that way than if you just mix the two. Now, I will say that in a lot of cases, you don't have to add anything because just the mixing of two colors uh, ends up resembling a, a reflection color that that looks slightly more purple than the the rest anyway. So you don't always have to do the adjustment, but you can always know what it takes and why something looks looks natural or unnatural. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, do wet on dry now here. So your mix, you know, to further elaborate on the answer to Mary, the the mix up here by my horizon is going to be a high percentage of reflection because, because of my angle. But down here where I'm looking through the water, low percentage. But in both cases, the result I want to be sure is moved toward the violet. Now, we're going to uh, try this wet on dry technique. So I've got a wet brush. Look, this is very wet, very wet. You can see that transparent paint and it's gonna be even more transparent when it dries. When this paint is wet, uh, you don't see through it quite as well. And then when it dries, you can see through it all crazy. It's, that's been a, a issue of disappointment for me many times actually. So I'll take this brush while it's wet and I'll go down here and just barely dip this into my reflection color, just a little is good. And I'll start going like this, same shapes, like this. And we're gonna make sure they overlap a little bit. So I'm gonna turn on that, turn on that wave making machine. Like this, I might even go both directions. Now, my brush is kind of flaring out a little bit. Do you see that? So in this case, it doesn't look too bad, but this might be one of the scenarios where I switch it around the other way. I'm like, oh man, I'm getting all of these bristles this direction. Let's try this direction. You know, sometimes you just have to experiment a little bit until you like what you see. So as you go darker uh, or as you go further into the distance, Max has a question yeah, for okay, you. Yeah, okay, let's hear it. Yeah, good. Do you get darker as you go further and less defined? I uh, That can be a misleading answer. So I want, want to just very uh, carefully point back to as you get more in the distance, it becomes more the color of what's being reflected. So up here, eventually, I'm going to paint my blue sky. And that will be the color that is bouncing off of this water. And so as I go further and further back, I want to get more of the color of that sky. Now, 
I don't want you to be confused when you pull up ocean pictures online and see a very dark horizon. There's a reason that happens because, because you're looking parallel to the water where the water's more calm, seeing lots of reflection. But then when you get way out there, you get all these big spiky waves that are pointing way up and you're getting a lot of these shapes, a lot more of these dark wave faces out there. And so for that reason, when you look to the deep ocean out on the horizon, you'll see a darker color, but don't, con don't confuse that with what light is doing. If you theoretically had a smooth surface going out in indefinitely, you would simply see more and more of the color of what's being reflected. And so then we're just adding the texture of the waves to that pattern. So as I go down, I'm getting darker as I go down. And in this case, because my underwater color is the dark color. So I'm seeing more what's under the water. It's, uh, it's the same scenario for anything reflective, actually. So now here's something that you can, you can also use in your picture. As I'm down here in the foreground, I can make shapes a little fatter and a little more sloped maybe, because think about it, if you're looking down, if it's a bird's eye view. Let's, uh, let's uh, maybe paint a little higher, or maybe tilt the oh, camera. Oh down. yeah, yeah, okay, very good. Thank you for telling me that. Give me a second here to move that camera. We're just, we're just I am off the frame. Let's go like this. Oh, good thing. Good thing we got Ben here. Yeah, well, we want to see all the pretty well, stuff you're doing down there in the corner. Here. Like this. All right, there we are. Yeah, great. Okay, now, when I'm painting down in the foreground, I'll do more since I did that off camera. <laughs> when I'm down here, I can make shapes a, a little more sloped like this. And that is in harmony with also being uh, more transparent. You know, I don't want to make them real bold. So see these, these shorter, fatter shapes and how I'm tipping my brush. These are kind of angled this way. Then I can even go the other way too. You know, I can go this way because the, you know, if you imagine kind of diamond shapes, you can, you can picture a diamond going either direction. So I can go this way. So this is something that I can do more in the foreground. I'm, I'm tipping these shapes and I'm making them not stretched out because of the downward perspective. And so to me, this looks more realistic than this even. So you choose which one you like better. Now I'm going to go up here and do a little bit more of this. So let's go. When you're uh, when you're painting the reflections on the water, or when you're painting water, uh -huh. Mary wants yeah. to know, do you uh, work on the sky and then the water? Are you just painting the water with knowledge of the color of the sky? Yeah, I usually. Talk yeah. About the, yeah. the yeah, relationship uh, between the two, you know? Yes, thank you. Yeah, this one, I will have to be careful that I put a sky that matches this reflection color because I mixed it before. And look, while I'm, while I'm talking, I just did a spot that didn't come out very good. See, it happens. It happens to me. That really oh, Miro Joe me. can suck at painting. <laughs> it's proven. It's proven. That's it. You've all seen it. You've all seen it. <clears throat> yep. Joe also has to learn, just like everybody. Yep, yep. It doesn't always go just my way. So uh, I do have to be careful. So yes, I, I did this with knowledge about the sky that I was going to. So at the beginning of the video, I said, oh, we're just going to do you know a basic uh, blue sky reflecting off of turquoise water scene. So since I know that and I've done this, I've repeated this color set enough times. Uh, I mixed it knowing that it would work out. But... Uh, if I if I went and mixed a sky that was a, maybe a lot more purple or a lot more greenish or maybe a lot more sunset color, suddenly this would would look a little mismatched if I wasn't careful to get that color. But I don't know. When things are familiar, they don't have to be accurate. If things are believable, so you get two colors that look great together, they're not going to stop looking great together, even if it's less than accurate like what what would actually happen in nature so i don't want to get too far into the world of of accuracy and light 
has to do this or that. Really, we're just trying to borrow those patterns in order to create good looking work as a starting point. The real, the better artwork to me is, is the work that bends the rules the most and still looks awesome. <laughs> I think that's the best. So you use smiley shapes, right? We're saying you got your little smiley shapes, yeah, yeah, but you tons. also talk about using frowny shapes or building frowny shapes out of smiley shapes. Yes. Uh, what's, You're right. what's going okay, on with So, them? all right, let's paint some more water. So we can make a swell on the water. We can make a smooth spot on this water. So if I take my, if I take my underwater color again and give myself a base to paint reflection on, We can create all kinds of shapes because maybe there's like a swell coming up. Maybe maybe if you are right behind a, a big wave, then you would have less of these spiky waves. Maybe you would have more of the boiling look where bubbles are coming up and it's kind of making these swells spread out. So if you had that, then you might use a shape more like this. And so you just decide what you know, what kind of a look you're going for. So I still want to try to tie this together. When I'm painting a mural, I, I look for how they tie together. And so I might try to build, I've got like the edge of a wave here. So I might come in here and build it there. So, so let me just do this. And let's, let's put the gradients on the bottom edges of it this time, like this, just slightly. Okay. And then maybe I'll put a little on top too. Once the colors are lined up, as long as I don't over mix these things, now I'm creating these mounds uh, of, of water. So it's a different kind of shape, you know? And, and so then if I intermix these a little bit, I do some of this, uh, it can be a, a very frustrating thing when you, when you go to incorporate something like this though. And then for some mysterious reason, it, it just looks wrong. So, uh, I just want to warn you ahead of time, uh, every, every time I've really tried to do this well and mix these two things together, <laughs> I find that my understanding of water still just goes so far. It's, it's not perfect. And I'll end up thinking, oh, you know, this should work, but it doesn't look quite right. But anyway, here's my attempt where I am combining my smile shapes also with some brown shapes. And because I'm just being careful to put gradients on these shapes, basically any sharp edge represents a corner where the water is, you know, coming to a corner this way, you know, maybe it's going down and out. For instance, this mound right here, we'll work on this one. That, see that gradient where it goes from underwater to reflection. So then right here under that, we can imagine this being the face of the wave and then it suddenly stops at a corner and then swoops toward us again where we see this reflection. So wherever I have that sharp change, I'm, I'm painting a corner, uh, a, a sharper sudden change of direction on the surface. And so that can go either way. We can paint those corners at the tops of a peak like this, or we can paint those corners uh, at the base of a wave to get either rounded things that, that where we have foam rising and might have shapes like this and, and then where those, I sit in my jacuzzi all the time and see this, you know, when we want that boiling look, we just reverse them. We just reverse it. So we have these rounded boiling up spots. Now we really got something under the water. Look, and I'm putting the gradients going downward. So something's gotta be under there making this, making this effect. Something's gotta be bubbling up to get that look. But just to demonstrate what I'm, what I'm trying to explain, depending where I put the sharp edges and where I put the soft edges, I'm creating the shape of the water. Something that always fascinates me is how everything we see is, is interpreting edges. You know, we've talked, Ben and I have talked about this, you know, when you're editing a video, when Ben has to edit me, which he has to do a lot of. So, you know, he has to have this really patient kind of gracious mindset as he's spending way too much time with his brother watching me jibber jabber. <laughs> oh, it looks like I might've lost Ben right here. Oh man. 
we'll see if we can get back on the line here. Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just uh, actually we'll wrap this up with a little bit. Looks like maybe we had a time limit or something on the on the call. I don't know. If he's able to get back on, then that'll be great. But uh, we're we're going to do another video. There's going to be another one, and we're probably getting close to time anyway. So, hey, there he is. Look at this. All right, we got Ben back. I lost you there for a second. <laughs> yeah, you know I. Uh... Uh, had some uh, some issues to attend to here, you know. Oh, so you actually just walked away. <laughs> but I'm back, man. I'm back. All right, sweet. So I thought I lost yeah. connection. He actually just walked off camera. We're we're living our real lives right now, trying to do a good YouTube show. <laughs> hey, this is the year of just getting it done. You know, however you get yeah. it done, let's get it done. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Ben, I was just I was just explaining. That yeah, and, and as I'm talking, I'm going to flip back to my to my camera here. Uh, edges. I was saying everything's made of edges. So if you want to paint better, learn edges. You know, learn how to manipulate edges. Because we were talking about the gradients of these things, and where I have a sharp edge, a hard edge, you might hear it called, versus a soft edge. And I was saying, you know, Ben has to look at me while he's editing videos and this transforms into all creative work is edges. You know, we've talked Absolutely. about this before. And so, you know, if you think of an edge as just some, some element that we perceive and where it transitions to another, another perceivable thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it was like you were talking about where we are line finding creatures. You yeah. know, we're looking for yeah. For things that make sense, you know, trying to make sense of what we yeah. see. Yeah. And uh, edges and lines are a huge part of that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So I I have uh, really tried with my brush strokes to master getting the edge that communicates what's on my mind as immediately as possible. I want the viewer to immediately perceive what I'm trying to show. And so that means mastering the edges that communicate that. It's all about the edges. I like it. All your curves and all your edges. <laughs> yes, I just Ooh. sang that. <laughs> and and he's a singer? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a guitar over there in the corner. Let me make a go of it. Get, for all any of you that did perfect it. imperfections. <laughs> Is that, that's John Legend, right? Yeah. We're going to get copyrighted right now by a robot on YouTube. We're going to get a notice. Robots are you don't own that song. Watching. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just want to remind everybody that I as I'm as I'm jibber jabbering here completing this painting, I am robotically, we're talking about robotics. I am very robotically shrinking my brush strokes because I know that I'm going up into the background. I'm leaving less space in between them. And so, okay, we're still on camera. We're still on camera. Less space in between them, but the shapes are still the same and they're much smaller. So I'm still spinning that circle with my brush. This is the large, large version of that motion. So you can see it. I'm doing that on a small scale in order to get the same shape to overlap a whole bunch of times, just over and over. As I go up into the background, you know, I'm starting to think that I, for a long time, I've tried to decide what is the very best technique. What is my favorite rather for achieving the most lifelike imagery? That's usually what I'm after. I'm not trying to say that lifelike imagery is superior, but I still haven't decided if wet on wet is better than wet on dry. But wet on wet is just so immediate. When I want to see the effect right now, it's like, okay, these are my colors, mix them up, put them on, there it is. We do it. You Speaking know? of things people want to see right now, uh, Kevicus wants to see a pirate, a Viking ship on that water. Oh, right man. Now. Okay. Well, we'll get there. We'll get to put in, yeah. put in uh, extra details. I don't want to. You know, Joe's got a, he's got a great glow in the dark paint. Uh, video you should check out on YouTube that'll blow your mind if you haven't seen it already if you're in the business of uh, pirate Viking ships. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Viking ship, you know, I might have to do research because I know that there is some specifics to what looks like a Viking ship. 
not just any old old ship. And uh, I, I would do a bad job if I tried to just pull that out of my memory right now. But I do love that idea of putting the ship on this water. So let's work toward that in the future episodes of this painting, of this workshop. So right now. Hey, talk about uh, why do you work in or do you work in small sections as you're painting this? Oh, yeah. Uh, or yeah. Do you very good. Very good. Uh, because this technique that I'm using is the wet on wet technique. And so I need this because I'm working with fast drying water based paint. Uh, I'm I'm not going to have the uh, gradients that I'm after if I if I let this dry and if I do larger sections I won't get to it quick enough they'll dry so that happens to people over and over and the next thing you know the uh, technique is not working well for you that's something that happens and so in order to uh, perform this wet on wet technique you want to be very uh, very skilled at producing the same result over and over. You want to have consistent results so that I can just go like this, put a block right next to that block that I just did, and do the exact same technique and actually have it blend. So I got to blend with, you know, these, these well, really these two other blocks, since this is a different technique down here. I want to blend with the other blocks around it. And I've got to do a small enough block that I can still have my uh, wet on wet look. So I'm going to come in here and start doing my shapes just like I did before. And, you know, at this point, I'm using a lot of just, just to uh, better explain the mechanics of the technique, the motion that I'm using. The stroke is performed a lot with my knuckles. You know, it's the same, it's the same thing when you see someone trying to pick a guitar. You know, you'll see a lot of knuckle movement as opposed to full arm movement. So when hey, I, if, if you were... If yes, I did just interrupt your knuckle commentary, but a lot of people are real <laughs> urgently trying to figure out how they would add sand to this sort of a scene. Oh well, let's make that let's make that the last thing, okay? We'll we'll add some sand to this, even though this is sand more coming a, up. Everybody, yeah, sand, sand is coming we'll up. do that. We'll do that, sand. and then we'll call it a day, uh, because this is not the end of this. You know, we're going to do this again next Monday, same time. We're going to do this, and. I want this to be a multi-part workshop that, that uh, everyone in the future can really take advantage of. And I do recommend uh, still getting the, getting the uh, videos from my site, getting the all video bundle or whatever you choose, because those are some fun paintings to be able to execute, you know, being able to do the underwater scene or being able to do the beach wave scene. Uh, you can follow my, you can follow all of my, steps and getting the painting done but now uh, use this as an extra tool to give you way better comprehension of the things that are maybe not explained as well in those videos so use this in tandem with those that's that's my hope and if for no other reason you can buy a video just to help me in my living <laughs> just to support the mural joe business okay so we're going to go like this, connect these. All I'm doing now is trying to connect my shapes together. So I use that, that technique to just blend these different blocks together. That's why I work in blocks to answer that question. Keep the paint wet. So if I want to add sand, then I would want to do, uh, you know, it's not a terrible thing since this is a, a completely different technique. You've seen it. And so now we can get rid of it. What I'll do is change my underwater color. And so the, the sand goes down into the water and I'll change that. So let's mix another color. We're using, I'm not going to use colors that I, that I didn't say I would use today. So red, yellow, blue, white is what we have to work with. And red and yellow is just perfect. That's going to be great. So what I'll do is mix a color. And I'll just see, maybe you can see me better if I'm here. I've got this, I've got this uh, quart of bright red. And I'm gonna put that in here. We got, we got uh, Fourth Street getting busier out there. Did you hear that car zip by? Did you hear that boom? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're right by a, a main road here in, in Flagstaff. That's right, Meryl Joe is in a, the massive metropolis of Flagstaff. Oh, no, Come on. Traffic everywhere. Yes, I gave up on trying to get a silent set. 
I was like, you know what? We just got to accept it. There's noise in this world. Okay, I just put red and yellow in, in this little pot here. And now I'm going to put white because this is going to be a very dark orange. And it's, look, it's mixing with all of this, all of this turquoise in my brush. And the colors are all going to mix together anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. The next color I need is white. So let's pull up my gallon of white. Premix a batch of this. And we'll be able to just very quickly brush these colors into that underwater color. Okay, so then we get that. Very carefully stir it over the top of the computer and the equipment and the carpet that's not covered. Now I think people are starting to understand why uh, it's important that they purchase your downloads and support you because Mural Joe goes through some computers and cameras, let me tell you. Yeah. He did, it does cost. Yeah. <laughs> I borrowed a camera from Joe once, a uh, quick anecdote, and uh, it was covered in paint. So I spent oh, a man. good portion of time yeah. trying to get the paint off of that camera. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what you do on keyboards when you've got a laptop that's just annihilated with, with uh, painted fingerprints. All you do, I'm just putting more yellow in as we talk because my color is very pink. I'm not trying to have pink sand. So I'm just getting an orange. My goal is to get orange here. And it's a real dirty orange because I got turquoise. You tip it upside down. You tip the keyboard upside down. And then you can just, you know, put all of your cleaner all over it. That's, that's what I've had to do many times. Okay. So I'm just going to call this good for my sand color. I'm going to flip to the other camera here. We've got the uh, orangish color right here. And I'll mix that into my other underwater color. So this is very simple. We don't have to overthink what's going to happen to the light as it mixes in this case, because the paint is actually going to be doing the same thing that water does. You know, we've got the paint uh, uh, mixing with itself and, and having a very similar reaction as the sand would mixing under the water like this. So we just use our underwater color right here. We're going to lose our change, rather, change our foreground right here. Start putting the sand. I'm using horizontal strokes. You know, if you want to put a little bit of texture at an angle or something, you can do that, whatever you want to whatever you want to see in there, but I'm going to get more and more toward the color of my sand as I work my way to the right here, like this. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. So here the water's really shallow, but look, I still have that turquoise mixed in there like that. I'm going to get some blue and green because I ran out. I started using this big brush in that little little pot. So I'm just going to just brush right out of that guy and just use the yellow. That initial color I used was these two colors. It was blue and it was a little bit of yellow. That's the color right there. So now I'm just mixing it on the canvas. I can paint that way all the time, just mixing it right on the canvas, but I've learned that I will get better more predictable results if I just take time to pre-mix it. It's a, it's a valuable discipline to be calculated in pre-mixing the right colors to set myself up for better success. So here I'm just using the same process. Here is my deep underwater color. Sad to see all of that water go away. It's your fault for asking about sand. Okay. Now, we're just going to put waves on there that are perhaps a little bit more subtle. So let's take the same reflection color and start putting some waves, but I'm not going to put extreme waves. These are, these are really going to be tapered out. And watch, I had that watered down. This was the wet on dry mix where I really added a lot of water to the same color. That might be real helpful to use here. 
because I don't want to see tons of, of reflection color here on water that I'm looking down at. If I'm looking down at the water, I'm seeing through it quite a bit. So I'm going to work in these rows like this. Now, if you're doing a beach that is in perspective, I am thinking along lines that are flaring out this way, like there's a vanishing point. So out here we have level waves, and I would I would want to, you know, transition from rows that are going along the beach, gradually getting more and more horizontal as they go up, just so that everything goes toward a vanishing point. And if anything looks kind of off, then I can just cover over it with lots of lots of waves or something, you know. If the perspective starts to look kind of kind of wonky. Okay, now I'm putting more of those same little reflection shapes in there, going over all the top edges again. If you remember that, that part of the strategy. And then there was this, you can, as the paint is tacking up, you can try that one out. Here's something that you can do with the wet on wet technique that you can't do with wet on dry. As it tacks up, you can drag the brush right over everything, just right across. It's got to be just the right amount of dry to get that. Okay, we're going to go like this. I'm going to put some more in here. My paint uh, is tacking up very quickly now. So what I'm going to do is maybe transition to maybe maybe some. Uh, I'm using my watered down color at the moment. This is my wet on dry technique because my base coat is no longer wet enough to really blend with this. It's blending a little because the paint is really drying. So switching to my watered down mix is really an advantage at the moment. I'm glad I had that because I'm, I'm not even going to be able to do the wet on wet. My base coat dried super fast. The reason it dries super fast, whenever you're doing a coat over something that has already been done uh, minutes ago, then it, it hyper speeds the drying. So be prepared for that. If, you, if you're trying to fix mistakes, just understand that if you do it right after you paint them, you're going to end up with paint drying way faster than it did the first time. The chemicals that made it made the first coat dry are going to act on, the, on any coat you put on top of that. It's going to dry super fast. So if it gets frustrating, let it dry for a day. Come back to it. Rest your eyes. Rest your mind even though that's so hard to do when you're really trying to get a piece of art done. Okay, so I'm putting little You making little some uh you making some coffee over there, Joe, or Yeah, what is that noise? I honestly don't know what that is. I think this place might just have a gas leak. Oh, nice. No. <laughs> this is going to make a really great video then when it explodes. Yeah. yeah, sorry about the noise. I don't know what it is. Let me take out this. Ah, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it I think it's just a water line or something. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. if Joe drops over dead, don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. No, it's fine. We'll, yeah. we'll sort it out. All okay. right, we're good. Sounds great. Okay, so now I'm ready to bring this. Now I purposely made rows because this now can resemble the slight, the slight tumbling of rows of waves. Now, now we've got a place to put a wave rolling in. Uh, this you know if we're making a beach scene we can put a wave rolling in this direction and oh man do we also have a uh, place for some foam on there oh yeah absolutely but we're gonna wait we're gonna wait and do that in a future episode so save okay. you know if you're painting along with me please save it save the picture i'd love to see pictures of it too and uh, we're gonna add to this the goal here is just for you to be able to mentally download all of the logic and the strategy that I'm using to do this, you know. It's yeah, not, how would you do murky water differently than what you're doing now? Um, mm, murky water just changing yeah. underwater color. So, so if you want it to to be real brown, you literally just change the underwater color to what you would expect to see. And so, uh, what do you think, Ben? Did our we, we kind of went over that in our glassy lake video that we were making, you know, when we were doing that edit where we were painting yeah. a local, we were using a local lake here that has very murky water as a model. Yeah. 
And well, you know, I've been I've been trying to uh, temper people's expectations, um, but there's a lot of interest in a glassy lake scene. Uh, yeah. How one might do that? Yes, uh, yes, we're gonna have that. But that is coming. That is so coming. A lot of interest in a television show. That's coming. Well, I'm gonna. I'm really gonna need your help, Tunga. I need your help. It's my passion to give away information for free. And so if there's one thing that would really help me in return, it would be uh, getting the word out. When, when we have this pilot episode where we actually made four episodes of a pilot Mural Joe show that we're hoping will do really well on YouTube and go to other networks. But I'll definitely need your help passing the word around, which I already know that you do that for me. I already know that you're all just so very helpful in that way. But it's coming real soon. So here I'm adding white because what I want is a bright version of this sand. And, and I can just you know shortcut that process real quick by just adding white to it. So I have the gradient going under my water. Then if I add a little bit of white, I have my light version of it right here. And, you know, if you want to just chop up the colors, leave them a little bit unmixed, then you'll get, you know, like sand that's walked on, you know, get, get some dark shadows in there. Maybe get a bit more white if you want to create, you know, kind of like painting waves, but just don't do the shapes real smooth. Just put brighter spots, put darker spots, work, and <clears throat> still horizontal patterns like this. You know, and you can you can put a little bit of, but down this close to the water, I probably would not have a lot of that texture because the water keeps hitting it. I just wanted to show you. If it chop up the values, the lighter, the darker colors, then you can get texture, three-dimensional texture in your sand. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put a wet edge. We're really running out of space here on my sand. And so what I'll do now is put the reflection in. So here we have our reflection color. To make that sand look nice and wet, right where it's going down into the water. Like this. Now, how dark this is really matters. So here it's a bit light. It's a bit too light for that sudden, we have a very sudden change. I mean, it looks okay right there. But look at this sudden change that we have going here from the light sand to the dark water. So I know that the colors are right. All that needs to change is the darkness so that it looks like this is just barely out of the water and this is just barely under the water. I need these two colors to be very similar. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll adjust this one. We can just make this one a bit darker. Here, let's go like this. We'll put, we'll put some blue and red. All I'm doing is mixing my reflection color darker. Blue and red is what I used. I added it to white to get that reflection color. Okay, so we darken this one down. When I'm mixing colors, I'm thinking about the value, the lightness and darkness of it, as well as the hue. I think that you'll have better success if you just had to choose one or the other. I would say actually value is the more important of the two. I was seeing a kind of turquoise. You see how it turns kind of turquoise where the blue mixes? I added that red so that I can look like reflecting light, not translucent light. I don't want that turquoise color. I want something that's a bit more purple. Okay, so this is how I make my sand look more wet. I just put the reflection of the sky on there. So here's my wet sand, and then watch this trick. <clears throat> right down here where it's real wet, we'll go to the light reflection color again, because this is where it's just real wet. Like that, and then we'll blend that in. The wetter it gets, the more it becomes that same glassy reflection that the water has. And then all I have to do to tidy that up is adjust the color that's under the water. 
So let's get more of this. Put the edge of the water coming down here. <laughs> Susan just dropped the phone number to a PBS in case you need to uh, solicit your show. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank you. That's perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, is it possible to paint waves that are going out to sea instead of coming in from the sea? Oh, yeah, for sure. For, sure. for example, maybe they're smashing into a rocky shore and then going back out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool idea. Yeah, I love it. Okay, let me wrap this up right here. You can definitely do that. Waves that are going back out. Well, you know, there are different kind of waves. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Maybe you can elaborate. If you're thinking like the more rolling beach waves, the big long surfer waves that are going, you know, are you looking at those uh, from the back side? You know, are you looking at waves that are curling from the back side of the curl is what I'm saying. Or are you just talking about... Uh, like a rocky scene where, where you have what you described, where it's just kind of bouncing off and going out. Because both of those things, you know, it's just a matter of understanding the shape and then knowing what the light will do when it hits that shape. That's all it is. Okay, so here I'm putting the, putting the sand. And the reason I redid this section right here was to get, get more of the shallow water look. That was the color I had in here, you know, I got my sand, I got my reflection. So now we see that sand going into deeper and deeper water as it goes out like this. This is how you do the, the water coming into the shore or that wet beach look, you know. Like that. Now I got to repair that reflection a little bit more before we call it a day. Right here. Let's put just a little bit. I think the reflection looks real good on the greener areas, the more watery colored areas. Then I just leave it off of the sandy areas. Like this. Just little spots of it. I don't have to be too careful with this. This is my wet on dry technique, you know, so I'm just putting the paint on there, letting it blend. Like this, here we go. Okay, it's not a masterpiece. It has a hole in the canvas. I gotta let it go. <laughs> but I just wanna be sure that you understand the workflow, the way I build a scene like this. So we're just putting a little bit of dissipating reflection shapes coming up to that. And then as this dries, it'll, it'll get bluer. You'll see more of that reflection color here and then that gradient where we have that tumbling in. You might throw in just a little bit of, a little bit of foam, you know, maybe you've got one of these guys coming right in here. Think of it in perspective, you know, think of a, of a curve like a portion of an oval. Think of an oval, a pancake laying here. Just do a portion of it like this with these dabs and get some splashy foam on there. We'll work on foam shapes as we progress in the picture. Work on those a little bit more. There we go. Just that color all by itself, you know, is a good start. Add some foam just to the front edge of that, of that little wave, maybe as it tumbles in, maybe put another one out here somewhere, but just a straight line. Like that, that one's going in there. Maybe we put a little bit in here. Wherever you want to see it, you can put foam coming down like that. You can even put a little bit reflecting on the sand. Watch this. A little bit reflecting there, a little bit reflecting there. You got to have just barely a dark enough color that you can actually see that reflection. Like that. 
Okay, well, that's it for today. I'm going to flip back to my middle camera to say goodbye. And so I uh, want to say uh, thanks to Ben. Ben, you can say bye to everybody. Thanks. We have Ben the whole time. Hey everybody. Watching. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for shooting us your questions. I'm still watching. If you want to shoot anything real quick, we'll yeah. make sure we talk about it. Um, but uh, there's a lot of love coming in from all over the world, man. We got Somalia. We got the Netherlands. Sweet. We got some names of countries that I'm not even going to try and butcher right now. Whoa. Whoa. That's so awesome. You know, this is a real privilege doing this kind of a, doing this kind of a job. I never regret it. Choosing this for a line of work. It is, it is the best. I appreciate it so much. You guys making my job fun. So uh, how many how many viewers did we get up to there, Ben, during this live stream? I'm curious about it. Oh, like like 8.3 million or so. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> just, yeah. just an estimate. Yeah. Brazil, mm -hmm. welcome. I see you guys out there. Yeah. All right, cool. Pakistan. Well, for those those of you that I, you know, really just bored out of your mind, this is the part where you can leave. I'm just I'm just killing a, a couple more minutes, giving giving people a chance to squeeze in their last little comments at the yeah, end. Yeah, there's here. a couple. There's a couple questions here. People are talking about uh, painting from photos. Yeah, referencing from photos. Yeah. do you study photos when you uh, are doing research for a painting? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This I I uh, well, studying photos is is like going out in nature and studying the real thing. Both of them are very helpful. So a photo can you know keep it still. And you're trying to look, but the real thing can keep it moving so that you can see what it's doing. And so I, I do both. I study photos like crazy. One that I'm working on right now, I can probably just show you if I if I just open it up here on my computer screen. I can show you um, here. Let me open up a actually this is on my computer. We'll go to my my files. And get this picture. I'm working on this. This is a job that I'm working on right now for my friend, uh, Steve. So here is here is my downloads. I've got it in. <clears throat> and we'll go here and put this to full screen. This is, this is in Hawaii. So if I go here and share that, this is a picture that my friend Steve took. And... Then he's got this this one also. So I'm studying this, and the reason I'm showing you this photo is so I can show you the painting next that I'm also working on. And so let's let's exit out of that one, and then we'll go here to this one. Some of you might Dude, you recognize nailed, you nailed that sand. That sand is pretty. <laughs> yeah, <accurately>. I, <laughs> thanks. Dan. I stare at it, you know. And this is the famous shoreline that I have to put behind that that picture right there. So you've got those those two pictures and then, sorry, here, I'm going to get off that. Hey, Ben, how's it going? <laughs> just and checking so, in, just checking yeah, in. Yeah, so now let me show you the painting. Okay, I'm taking these off so I can walk away for a second. <clears throat> this is what I'll be working on for the rest of the day right here is this guy. Put this up here. And so if we switch over to the other camera, you know, we can see there that I've got that I've got those colors. It's a little bit, a little bit overexposed, kind of bright, but I have been uh, struggling, man. I am the, it, having the time of my life trying to get those colors to be just right. So this is a base coat where I'm experimenting with, with trying to get the, I'm going to tone the light down so that you can see it a little bit better. I've been experimenting with how to get the undercoat. I really want an effect that I have not yet achieved, you know. So this is you're literally looking at my my the the uh slaving over details that I do in order to arrive at the different techniques. I uh have a photo that I I need it to look like and I just can't quite get it you know I, i've got my colors down but what i really want is for these little squiggly shapes to appear under all the different waves because you could see in that that previous photo you could see that that was uh 
I don't have it open still. You could see in that picture, I got it right here. Look at, look at the texture on that water, how it's got all of the waves are in harmony. And what just bothers the heck out of me is that I don't have a great technique for achieving that look right there. However, you can see in that the round shapes that have the gradients going downward. Do you see that? So we worked on that today, the reflection shapes. If I take my mouse you know, and, and hover it on what I'm talking about, you can see what I mean. So see these long strips right across here? So that's the kind of stuff I was doing over on the right side of the painting today. And these have gradients on the lower side going down into the underwater color. See gradients on the lower side. But what makes this different is that we also see those bright squiggles going right in harmony with these waves. And I just am so determined to get that effect. I just got to have it, you know. I want all of the beauty of, of, the, uh, of the harmony it has, you know, not, not just that by itself. But I want, you know, I want it to look just like in those pictures. I want it to look like you can dive right into that beach. That's what I'm working on. I'm gonna be doing I'm that. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Good. So you know, that's a little a little preview of my life, the things I slave over. And the good news is my friend is hiring me to do the painting, so I at least get paid for this research. You know, this is good. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, is there anything else we need to attend to, Ben? Before yeah, we... those squiggly lines underneath that uh, picture that you just pulled up—they're called uh, caustics. You got what it. Happens, yeah. What happens to make those caustics? Ah, uh, you know, uh, put a magnifying glass in the sun, and you'll be seeing the same thing. The water is is working like a, a magnifying glass, camera lens, a pair of glasses. It's it's changing the direction of the light, and so it goes. You know, it goes through that curved wave and. You know, that, that surface changes the direction and puts it all together. And so you end up with darker spots where the light is not and those bright squiggles where the light is being focused. You know, I think there's probably one more thing that people want to yeah. know about in, okay. in general. Right. And this is kind of a broader question. But, uh, you know, I'm your brother and I've seen you make art your entire life, right? So yeah. I know that what is mural joe today has started many 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 years ago but there's yeah, a lot of people yeah. that are curious you know like do you do you like draw every day do you paint every day like yes. how often like yeah. you know imagine yourself you're like a ripped yeah. bodybuilder right like how in the world did you get so ripped <laughs> how do these people <laughs> thank you thank ripped? you for noticing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you yeah. know you're you're yeah. uh <clears throat> what what thank you. has made Joe into Mural Joe, just briefly, you know? Yeah, thank you for, for the high compliment, first of all. I appreciate that. I think that uh, my, my, uh, ever, my everlasting dissatisfaction with where I am as an artist, uh, in, in a very lighthearted sense, I just don't see myself as that great ever because all i can see is what i can't do and for me that's liberating because i realize that i don't need to be at the top because the top doesn't exist i'm not going to get there and so there's freedom there's freedom to just pursue and all i do you know it's kind of like how fast do you do you run when uh, you know that you're not going to hit a wall, but if you, <laughs> you know, you're careful if you feel like there's obstacles to trip over. So anyway, you know, I have this freedom that I just freely explore. I'm just making garbage. I'm just going to throw it in the trash when I'm done. We're doing this workshop on a ripped canvas and cheap house paints just so we can learn about waves. And my pursuit has, has just been enjoying that process and completely letting go of what it makes me. I don't need to be the guy with the pictures in the galleries. Maybe one day I will, if it just happens. I don't need to be the person that's always delivering a great finished product. I want you to be that actually, because that's an awesome thing to be able to do, but you need good tools. And I find this joy in being a tool maker. So yes, it's hours. It's hours of, of uh, very 
uh, much a labor of love, just, just diving into all these details, drawing it, painting it, drawing it, painting it. I grew up drawing because I loved shapes. I loved lines. I never stopped liking them, never stopped loving them. And it always just fascinated and my, made my eyes dance, you know, like, wow, man, that just looks so good. That's it. True answer. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up now. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Fine. Uh, my, my final words in parting is do not be discouraged. Just enjoy what you're doing. And uh, it's such an honor for you to join me and watch these. We'll be doing this again next Monday. If you want to look at additional content, you can always take a look at my website, muraljoe.com, and you can get on the email list there as well if you want to be notified whenever I do these kinds of things and you want to be more prepared, maybe paint along with me. So it's been a blast. We'll see you next Monday.